President Biden has officially pulled out of the election and has endorsed Vice President Harris for the Democratic nomination. What does this have to do with your money? What does that mean for the markets? Guys, there's a lot of ideas here. First off, markets tend to not like uncertainty, and there's still uncertainty. Yes, he has endorsed Vice President Harris. However, there's a lot of people in the Democratic Party who don't even want her as the nominee for the president. In fact, President Obama spoke to her yesterday and was very clear that he's not he, he wants to allow the process to see itself through and allow whoever the Democrats nominate to get there. 4,000 delegates, give or take. She's already locked down 500 of them. Now, the good news is that all the money raised for Biden-Harris has to be used with Harris, and that's a lot of money. I've heard upwards of $150 million. They raised $50 million yesterday after Biden announced that he wasn't going to run anymore and endorsed Harris. But what does that mean for stocks? Well, today, stocks are up. Now, guys, you know me. You know my opinion. And if you don't know me my opinion, I want you to hear this because this is probably going to be a more unique take. This is what the markets have done since 1950-something until now. And these are all the, not even all the bad things. This is a fraction of all the bad things that have happened. Markets are going to go up. Now, everybody wants to play the game. Markets up, markets down, who's president, who's not president, etc. But at the end of the day, guys, I don't care about any of it. What I care about is, are you buying good companies at good prices? That's what matters. Because a good company run well, will run well no matter who's in office. Now, are there certain leaders who are more pro-business than others? Yeah, I would give you that. But don't forget, guys, that even the ones who are anti-business, like Bernie Sanders, he's a multimillionaire because his wife ran a for-profit college. He's a multimillionaire because he sold books to people. He's a multimillionaire for capitalistic reasons, even though he doesn't believe capitalism is the best way to go. At the end of the day, even socialists and communists love money. So whoever's in office is going to have lobbyists and going to have friends, and in all likelihood, they're going to be wealthy enough to realize and want pro-business activities and ideas. What I'm here to teach on this channel and on our main channel is that what should matter to you is paying good prices for great businesses. That's what matters. And to look at drops in stock prices as an opportunity, not something to fear. We want to see red on our heat map. This needs to be more red. I like red. I want you to love red. I love when the markets are down because if prices become more intelligent and make more sense, I'm going to buy more. Because at the end of the day, this is what I know is going to happen over long periods of time. And I have to use those buying opportunities on stocks that make sense at the right prices in order to buy those shares at the right price. Now, don't forget, when you buy a company, it is likely to go down further. How much further? No idea. Anybody telling you otherwise should be punched in the face and you should ignore them and block their channel. But as long as you follow the right process, you will do well over long periods of time. And that's what matters, no matter who is president. If you need the right situation to make money, you're not an investor. But I know you're watching this channel because you're going to be, you're different than other people. Let's look at what happened last week. Last week was a bloodbath in the markets, but why? The big companies. They're the ones that took the hit. Look at all this green down here. All this green down here. Where the big companies go, that's where the market's going to go. That's why we saw this big run-up for a long time. The Magnificent Seven were killing it. The big companies were killing it. Sounds a lot like the dot-com era when we had the same thing happening. It was all largely led by big companies, and the smaller companies did pretty well last week. A lot of green. Now, this week, going to be an exciting week. Look at all these companies reporting. Look at these ones. Verizon. Truist Bank, Google, Tesla, right there, uh, Visa, interesting, Coca-Cola, Chipotle, um, 3M, which I own, T. Rowe Price, which I own. Again, don't own a stock just because something the internet does. Do your own research. Southwest, I also own. So Southwest is funny. There's that meme recently that they didn't get affected by the, the shutdown in technology the other day because their, their computers are from 1993. Yeah. So um, Maybe that was their play. That was the play, probably. They're like, oh, you suckers out there. So guys, I took a poll recently on Twitter. 
I do it every so often. I love the poll. By the way, follow me on Twitter at EMPaulG and subscribe to this channel. These are the two things I want you to do. I'm very active on both. We love reporting the news. We love reporting earnings. We love talking about these things, not because we sit there and make our decisions based on what earnings do, but about understanding the companies. That's what's most important. So I asked the question, Mo, which one of these three companies that are reporting earnings this week do you think has the biggest chance of missing on earnings and or revenue, Google, Tesla, or, uh, or Chipotle, or none will miss. Look at that. Google, 6%. Tesla, news follows mm -hmm. the stock price, 57%. I would have said none. I said all beat, but I, I didn't vote. You did not vote. No, I don't go on Twitter. You don't go on Twitter. No. That's sad. I no. like Twitter a lot. X. I have uh, 385 votes so far. It's going to be around for one more day. Um, I personally believe that if it's going to be anyone, it's going to be Tesla, but I do believe everybody's going to miss. Yeah. I think they're the biggest chance. But not many people are saying it about Google. And we also put the poll on our YouTube channel. Very similar results on this YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to get these updates. Mo, mm -hmm. what are the markets saying for rates? This, this is incredible, this guys. Is you guys got to hear this about rates for next week's meeting versus September. Go ahead. So next week's meeting is happening. Uh, they're going to announce their rate decision on the 31st. That's Wednesday. 97.4% chance that things stay the same. Now, when we go to September, this is the highest number that we've seen in months. I mean, 18 months probably. 93.6% chance that rates are cut a quarter point. <laughs> That's at the September 18th meeting. Yeah. Listen. Wow. People are begging for a rate cut. Mo, have we completely... I, I, go ahead. Why? Well, I mean, listen, in fairness, inflation and core inflation are on a steady state decline. Powell has said it very consistently, though, and the question is, will he hold to his word? He has said, I'm not going to cut rates until I feel that inflation is definitely on the downward trend. Yeah, he even said it last week. Have you heard about the SAM rule, S-A-H-M? Hmm. The SAM rule tends to be what the Fed looks at. Basically, it's something like if unemployment is a half percent higher than the low in the last 12 months, you're either in a recession or on your way to recession. Okay. This seems to be the thing that the Fed likes to look at the most. Now, the question is, where are we at right now with the SAM rule? So this is the SAM rule going back to 1960. And as you can tell here, pretty obvious observations, but it doesn't look like we are here. Look at this, Mo. No. It's not that big of a difference. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't think it's even, maybe it's close to half percent. I don't think it's right there, but... Remember, we also said that the inverted yield curve has... That's true. Ha I mean, this one has turned out to be the inverted yield curve. Is this the first time in history? Not history, in the last like 12 times yeah. that it's been wrong? Definitely. Maybe so. Maybe so. Pumping a lot of money in the economy. But remember, when we pump money in the economy, we're taking away from future growth. And I, the thing I have about the Fed rate cuts is we still have low unemployment, which is inflationary. Yeah. You know, true unemployment should be around five and a half percent to really make sure that you're not hiring people who shouldn't be hired and not having too much wage growth. I look at this thing to myself, I feel like everybody thinks that the Fed should just cut rates if they're not going to increase rates. I don't necessarily agree with that. I still believe that keeping rates the same or even increasing rates, it's still a viable possibility. But... Nowadays, we have a Fed that's heavily criticized and scrutinized by the American public. This was not the original intention of the Fed because we didn't have the internet. We didn't have even TVs back then. It's a very different world we live in. Fed Chairman Powell goes on, goes on the Capitol Hill. He sits in front of all these geniuses, genius, genius losers, on, Economic geniuses. Uh, on Capitol Hill who are just sitting there trying to promote themselves. And, you know, he has to take the brunt of these like bashings and go, no, I don't agree with that. <laughs> No, I don't think that's pro I don't think that's fair. And it's just I, I feel for the guy. Now, this tells me, okay, maybe we're not anywhere close to a recession here. The same rule has been pretty indicative, as you can see. Recession, 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 recession. I mean, look at these things. Recession, 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 recession. I mean, it's not a fluke. Now, the good news is, guys, this also tells you that when we do have a recession, we'll get out of it. We will come out stronger. We will come out better. Are there things that cause concern for me in this country? Of course there are, but there's always going to be things that cause concern. And we have to remember, recessions aren't a bad thing. Correct. And people have made recessions and interest rates the worst thing of all time in this country. <laughs> Higher interest rates. Higher interest rates. Really, any interest rate above zero. Yeah. Bad thing. It's, um, it's bizarre. Well, I mean, we, I always tell people this. You're a good investor 
during bad times. You're not a good investor when everybody is doing well. When I sit there and see the people who are all bragging about their returns, there are very few that I go, yeah, that's a pretty good uh, investor right there. Very few. Are there a couple? Yes, but they're not investing in the mega cap stock stuff. Recessions are good because it weeds out crap. Everybody watching this video, whether you own a business or work for somebody, you probably think you have the best business and you think you're probably the best worker. That could very well be true. So if that's the case, you should want a recession. It'll weed out all the crappy people that your company hired that are taking away credit from you and taking away resources from you. All great employees and businesses do better in recessions. All crappy ones do worse. This is an absolute fact. This is why I kind of want a really bad stock market. So it gets rid of these financial hooligans that are out there. The Tom Nashes, the Meet Kevins, the Jeremy from Financial Education. All these guys I look at going, they, they hit it on one stock and all of a sudden felt they did a video and they're geniuses. Now I have my flaws completely on these on investing, but I always challenge every single one of them. Let's do a challenge, a 10 year challenge. Nobody's taking me up on it. Isn't that ironic? I'm the one willing to put my money where my mouth is. That's how confident I am that during bad times, I'll probably do pretty well. How well? I have no idea, but I'd rather bet on good cash flowing businesses at good prices than hype over the long run. It always works out better in the regard for paying less for good value. That's the true meaning of investing. With recessions, same thing. Com bad companies and companies with bad balance sheets suffer during recessions as they should. Mm -hmm. The cream always rises to the top. The cream rises to the top during recessions. So everybody out there who says they're a great investor, everybody out there who says they're a great employee or great business, you should want recessions. I was the other day, I was eating at my favorite um, sushi place. I sat at the bar, eating by myself. This guy next to me starts talking to me. He's a painter. He says to me, he goes, what do you do? I'm like, well, I got some apartments. I got this stuff. I got, you know, do stuff in, you know, stock market and all that stuff. He's like, oh man. He's like, this market must be great for you. I'm like, actually we do better during bad times. He's like, oh, that's wonderful. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, during good times, everybody's a competitor and they're throwing money, stupid money at things. During bad times, there's a lot less crap out there. He's like, oh, that makes sense. I had this conversation with a regular guy who's a painter and he goes, oh, that makes sense. I even looked at him. I said, are you a good painter? He goes, yeah. I'm like, everybody who has a paintbrush is a painter, right? He's like, yeah, you tell me, about, tell me all about it. Because now he has to charge high prices. Yeah. So anybody else can go out there and be like, yeah, I'll charge you uh, 17 bucks an hour. Yeah. Right? Well, it's funny. During, during COVID is when you said it. You said, imagine if everybody in the world was good at your job. Yeah. And that's when we were talking about investing and everybody was a market genius. Yeah. Imagine you're a lawyer and every single person is an amazing lawyer. The, the friends of mine who asked me for advice back during COVID, now they're crickets. Why? Because investing is easy, easy to make money. What we're trying to teach here on this channel, on our main channel, is a process to apply in good times and bad. Is it hard? Yes. Why? Because the stomach for it. Peter Lynch always says, everybody has the brain power to invest properly. Who has the stomach? Everybody has the brain power to sit there and say, yeah, during a recession, I'll be buying lots of things. Who has the stomach during these times? The world was shut down here. The financial world was going to shut down here. The dot-com world right here, the internet was the next big thing. It shut down. Right here, I don't remember what's going on right here. This is actually a garden variety uh, recession right here. Mm -hmm. Right here, inflation and interest rates. 18% interest rates, inflation at double digits, unemployment at 10.5%. By the way, lowest stock market valuations in history. If you bought here, you made a killing. That's the point. When things are bad, when prices are low, interest rates are high, inflation's high, that's when valuations are at their best. As Morgan Housel says, every past market fall looks like an opportunity. Every future one looks like a risk. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. It's a great, Morgan Housel is the best writer in the world of finance to ever exist. He's absolutely incredible. And that's what we're trying to teach here as a process. If you want somebody to hand you the stocks to buy, we're not the channel for you. And I get it. Go out there and those morons out there will gladly show you whatever stock they're pumping and dumping. But do you want to learn a process that I explain using the stocks I've bought? I want you to disagree with me. You need to disagree with me. I disagree with people, but you need to apply these principles. These principles are tried and true and they work. You apply them to your own investment world. I want you to have the different level of thinking by saying recessions are a good thing because whether you own a business, or work somewhere, if you start to believe that, you're gonna start changing the way in which you approach your job or your business. You're gonna prepare yourself for bad times so that you can be the last man or woman standing. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for everybody in our company. 
whenever we have a bad time, I think it kind of annoys some of the partners that I'm Mr. This is great. We've learned a ton here, but it sucks to be in bad times. It sucks to see things get worse, but it's necessary. Every time in my last 20 years when things were bad for me, within a matter of a year or two, I said, thank God that happened. We became better because of it. So guys, I really need you to subscribe to this channel. If you want to have a different outlook than the rest of the markets, than everybody else, if you want to have a community around you that will help you feel better when all your friends are doing a different thing, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, guys, we're going to be covering a lot of great earnings this week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for that reason so you can make sure you catch all those earnings releases. Thank you very much for your time.